Hi there, welcome back. Today we will take a quick look at the Essential Carving Effect Template. Once installed in DaVinci Resolve, you will find it available in the Effects panel under Folder Essential Effects. This effect involves two layers, carving the top layer into the bottom layer to create the appearance of either an embossed or engraved look. In this example, the bottom one is a stone image. And the top one is a text title clip. To apply the effect, select both clips, create a fusion clip, and then apply the effect. The title is immediately carved into the surface of the stone, creating an engraved look. In the inspector, you can adjust the carving depth to switch the effect between a recessed look and a raised one. Reduce the edge softness for a sharp carving edge, or increase it for a more rounded look. You can also adjust the light angle to match the highlight and shadow with your scene's lighting conditions. The brightness is used to darken or brighten the carving surface. You can invert the carving to create a reversed effect. To match your scene, you can adjust highlight strength. Or change the highlight and shadow colors. If you want to add another image and carve it into the surface, open the fusion clip in the timeline. Add the image to the timeline Adjust its size and arrange the positions of both the image and the title if needed. OK, this looks good. Select both the logo and title clips, create a compound clip. Go back to the timeline and you can see the image is now also engraved into the stone surface. If you want, you can keep adding more layers to the compound clip. For example, open the compound clip in timeline. Add an essential shape to the timeline. Change to star. Resize, reposition as you want. Now we have an effect that looks like all three clips are carved into the stone surface. OK, this is how you can use this essential carving effect in your timelines. If you want to know more about how the effect is created with Fusion tools, you can open the effect in the Fusion page. Double click to expand the carving group node. The media in one node is the background stone image. And media in two is the image being carved. Channel Boolean node is used to make a selection from the background by using media in two as the masking effect. In the inspector, the mask is inverted. Multiply by mask is checked to get the selected part of the background image. Edge shadow is a fusion shadow node. In the inspector, the shadow offset is modified with a vector modifier. This allows for easy adjustment of the shadow's depth and direction. Next, I duplicated the shadow effect by creating an instance of the previous node. This adds another shadow effect after the previous one and makes the shadow look deeper. This edge highlight is also a shadow node, but with color set to white to create the edge highlight effect. The offset is also modified with a vector modifier. And the softness is linked to the edge shadow node with a simple expression. This setup allows you to control both the highlight and shadow effects using the softness setting in the shadow node. The settings of the Highlight Vector Modifier are linked to the previous vector modifier for the Shadow node. To get the name of a modifier, 
you can hover your mouse on the modifier header, and the name will appear at the bottom left corner. When hovering over a parameter, you will see both the node name and parameter name that you can use in simple expressions. This one is vector2. And the previous one for the shadow node is vector1. The distance is linked with an inverse relationship, making it appear on the opposite side of the shadow. A highlight strength option is added in the expression to control highlight level. It's a custom control added to the modifier. You can right-click on the title of the vector, select Edit Controls, and add custom controls as needed. The angle and image aspect are linked to the ones in Vector1, so that the settings remain consistent across both nodes. Now we have the image with the title and logos carved out and the highlights and shadows added. Merge this with the original image, and we get the final carving effect. After the media in one node, a brightness node is added to adjust the brightness of the background image. And in the inspector, we can adjust the gain value to adjust the brightness of the original image. When it's merged as the background, only the carved portion is visible. All right, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and find the template useful. Please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.